Hard Truth Tony Schaefer powered by Six Hour. Never settle. I had a choice of what I carried in combat. I always carried the best. I recommend you carry the best. The best is Six Hour. Never settle. I've got my trusty P320 uh, uh, 45 carry here next to my side. Ready to go rock and roll if I need it. Just saying. You never can t- tell who's going to come up. And uh, Anyway, so go with Six Hour. Never settle. Do, do, do with the best. And we are on the America Out Loud Talk Radio Network, also available on the America Out Loud Podcast Network. Check us out. Project Sentinel. ProjectSentinel.com and .net. And we are on Rumble, Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, et cetera, et cetera. So I have a special treat today for the audience, a return uh, uh, interview uh, E, friend of the show, friend of mankind, uh, Brigadier General Retired Blaine Holt. Blaine Holt, uh, my God, I had to check his bio out today. I, I'm just going to say, go over to Restore Liberty and Google Blaine Holt. And, and, and you know, he is, uh, I am proud to say, a general officer who actually uh, did something to get to earn his stars rather than uh, just uh, be given them based on the fact he looked good in polyester. So General Holt, welcome to the show. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, <laughs> just to mount on what you said there, uh, I've got my trusty six hour P365 here next to me. Ooh, wow. Well, that's good. I, 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 my my, my uh, pocket carry is a 365. So I, I get that too. So Blaine, thank you for joining us. Um, man, oh man, at the time we're keeping this, we, we literally are seeing the world uh, on the brink of either economic collapse, political collapse, uh, World War III. It's kind of like uh, someone elected a, a guy to office who uh, is mentally compromised and uh, had taken bribes, and he's in charge. It's almost like that. What do you think? It's just near. It's so much like that. It might just be that. Um, That's right. I vote for answer D, all of the above. because <laughs> uh, And, you know, our, our friend Catherine Herridge, she said at the beginning of the year, we might see a black swan event. And and the only thing I would take exception to that great lady on is Catherine. I don't see a black swan. I see a flock of them. Yeah. And, um, and, and a lot of these things stem from uh, a, 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 a Biden administration that we find out every day more and more just how compromised they are, not whether or not they're compromised. So that to that point, you know, there's a lot, I, I don't believe history repeats itself, but I do believe it uh, samples. And so one of the sampling I see before us is uh, kind of demonstrated in the record low numbers of uh, Joseph Robinette Biden. Apparently he's at 38 percent. I think it's lower personally. That is Carter level, Carter level uh, disapproval numbers or approval. That's approval, approval numbers. And parallel to that, obviously, and I, you know, you and I are friends with a lot of the old Reagan guys. And mm-hmm. I talked to them and they're still around. And, you know, there was a malaise that set in, in, in the Carter administration. Uh, basically, people were pretending that the Russians weren't a threat. I'm not saying the Russians are a threat now. I'm saying that, that when Russians really were a threat. Uh, people were ignoring it. There was a, a, a lack of interest in actually creating a military that could fi- effectively fight. Uh much like we're seeing today. As a matter of fact, uh, the headline yesterday was Army is cutting out like 25% of its strength because reasons. Apparently, they can't recruit people. Uh, do you see the, the fact that we're being presented with a global array of enemies, such as the Iranians, the Chinese, uh, and, and dare I say, you know, even the Russians, if I think they, they thought somehow they could get away with something. Do you think cutting, uh, the, because we can't recruit, do you think, uh, instead of admitting we can't recruit and changing the tactic, we just cut numbers. Do you think that's the right strategy for the army? Not only is it the wrong strategy, I think we should start questioning motives. Um, <laughs> when, 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 when you start to look at a problem like recruiting, where you and I have gone over the year is, hey, maybe Marxism, a uh, illegal vac- vaccine policy, disgracing mm-hmm. veterans in uniform with Valor devices who decided they didn't want an experimental drug, Maybe, maybe getting rid of the meritocracy is not going to yield great retention and recruitment numbers. Now, what we would say on the outside, and this is to the questioning motives part, is, well, why would you do that? Because one of your motivations could possibly be that you're actually interested in weakening our military, that <clears throat> we have watched general officers get to high levels of promotion, not based on achievement, but based on <clears throat> how quickly they can answer the words yes. And we we know this because look at the disastrous failures of Afghanistan. Rather than seeing military leaders stand up and say, this is inappropriate, I resign in protest, 
We saw the opposite. We saw those that presided over America's so far uh, largest military disaster um, get promoted to new right. ranks. And and now the answer is, well, let's go ahead and just cut the billets that we can't recruit. I know. Um, it's insane. It's and and insane. What, we, what we need to do is we need to question the motives to say, if you're not about weakening our military, then what are you about? Because it does look on the outside that you're making every single correct decision to decimate American power and American deterrence. And that's interesting because they, they're, they're, the way they're trying to say it is like, oh, well, you know, we're cutting all these uh, counterinsurgency and counterterrorism bill. It's like, I don't think terrorism's gone anywhere. I, I don't know. Did, did oh, I miss the here. memo on that? Uh, did I <laughs> it's here now. Memo? It's on no, our It's story. like, man, where, well, did I like sleep through that or something? I don't know. So it's, and by the way, I miss the old days when we didn't have these challenges. I remember, you know, I used to be a planner. You've probably been to Camp Smith, right? And, yep. and, and there's that staircase that goes kind of from the, the command area where they have the meetings and down to the parking lot, there's just stairs. And I used to try to get Air Force and Army officers to run up and down that thing and see if, if blue or green polyester chafed more. I, why can't we have those days back? <laughs> we need that kind of planning. We do. Uh, we do. Yeah. So, but there, let's, let's go to, yes, you let's know, go to that. You know that polyester, polyester is a fossil fuel. So maybe that's true. <laughs> that's true. And I, I saw a lot of, poly, I lot of saw a lot of fossils wearing polyester too. Just saying, you know, <laughs> there's a company accepted general. So just say, so, all right. So let's move on to the air force. Uh, this guy named Aaron Bushnell. Now I, uh, this guy emulated in front of the uh, Israeli embassy. Tragic as it is, I feel I feel sorry for his family. But Blaine, I'm going to say something controversial. I think he is a direct result, a product of uh, not only the culture of uh, using skin color, immutable characteristics of skin color, of uh, of who you like relating to civil rights actions. This idea that who you sleep with and if you what sex you identify with should uh, be the determinant factor of your success or assignment in military. I think he's a direct result of that. What, I mean, what do you think? I, I agree with you. This is a, this is a tragic symptom warning sign of what's happened to our military. And certainly there's always going to be disturbed uh, men and women that we have to address in the military. But what I think we're seeing here is something a little bit darker. I think what we're seeing is an outcropping of cultural rot a steering away from mission focus, a steering away from constitutional values, American values. And this poor young man was led astray with indoctrination about just false narratives. And he got so um, uh, activated uh, and triggered that he took this, this plan of action. Our friend, Colonel John Mills, he just wrote yeah. a piece in Substack where he did a little bit of digging and found out that this young man has also had access to uh, electronic eavesdropping of Americans through the NSA and those types of things. But but if this is true, it, it gets me even more concerned because I wonder about his workplace. What yeah. types of culture do we find in that workplace? And is it really, are we in a place where we're setting aside the constitution for this woke left Marxist extremism? Well, that's why I brought up uh, in our notes, and we did, you know, we actually do some level of prep, believe it or not. <laughs> I, sent, I sent him a note on the, the Bradley Chelsea Manning issue. Right. And uh, I would argue uh, that Bradley Manning, he was a private, a, ver a very troubled kid who was openly gay. He, he, he eventually tra tra transitioned to be Chelsea Manning, I guess, in prison. I guess I, I, that's one of those army benefits I didn't know about, apparently. I did not know you could transition. Yeah, and then Obama pardoned him. <laughs> yeah, and then Obama pardoned him. And so anyway, so, uh, but my point being is that he also, without uh, regard to the consequences of giving someone a clearance uh, who had mental issues, and look, Blade, truth be told, everybody thought I was crazy. Maybe it's true, but uh, I'm not the kind of crazy that goes out and sells secrets or gives secrets away, right? I mean, there's a difference. Yeah. And it sounds like we're just giving these people who have real mental challenges right. uh, access to highly classified information. What do you think? Uh, no, I absolutely agree with that. And um, again, it's my question would be, why aren't the service chiefs, the commanders and the first sergeants hauled in front of Congress to explain how the stewardship of these people is on track and they're tracking with their service uh, and American values? Because I don't think that those questions get answered so easily. 
Um, yeah. this, this young man in the air, airman who had this happen to him, again, it, it gets back to this place where you and I were mollified by the outcome of Afghanistan. If we yeah. don't have accountability, if no one pays a price, then the price will keep getting paid. And it could be at the micro level with this astonishing uh, event of this young man, or it could be um, just a mushrooming and a growing of wars from Kabul, we go on to Ukraine, and now we're in uh, Israel. And it started out innocent with some blankets and helmets for the Ukrainians, and now we're yeah. into French troops are considering being in there. And and all on, on, on American projected weakness where the academics have supplanted um, uh, competent military planning and competent military advice. And this is a very dangerous place for us to be. The DEI thing really bothers me. Oh, I think, that's two of us. <laughs> well, no, I mean, because, I mean, so much of this goes back to the very, the very essence of the policy construct of people like Lloyd Austin mm-hmm. and others, I think, come out of the mentality, which has infected uh, uh you know, down to the individual level, to, to Aaron Bushnell, uh, to and uh, by the way, I I don't mean to detract, but you know the the Austin uh, dereliction of duty and the whole thing with surgery. I, I'm going to ask you a question, and, and maybe you as a general officer, you know, and I served in combat with Lloyd Austin, right. I, 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 and so he was a brigadier. You're a brigadier. Mm-hmm. Do you think there's any chance that this is not about uh, cancer? That maybe he's maybe going through and becoming. Uh, you know, Lloyd Austin, maybe he's being Loretta Austin. Do you think he started transitioning to be a woman? <laughs> I don't know, but would that not, that would be the cake. I'm just wondering because it's a trend. It's a trend, you <laughs> yeah, know, I, mean, I see these things. Boy, that would, that would be the cake topper in a year called 2024. <laughs> I, think, I think he'd look good in uh, uh, high heels. Don't you? I mean, you know, he's a tall yeah. guy already. Yeah. yeah. I remember I was a 141 uh, aircraft commander. And if you remember before they got <clears throat> dropped by terrorist bombs, uh, the Alcobar Towers in Dahran. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. And I was staying there with one of our air crews. And if you're all staying in the same apartment instead of your own little hotel room, you get to know about people. And I remember our navigator, <laughs> a big, burly man, um, <laughs> just very good at navigation. He's sitting there in the middle of everybody while we have our pizza on the table, and he whips out his nail polish and starts painting his toenails. Wow. And, and back then, in 1992, we're all just looking at him like, oh, my goodness. Now, today's air crew, let's say it's a C-17 air crew sitting around yeah. the DACA in, uh, uh, outside of Ukraine, um, they would look at something like that and go, oh, yeah, that's normal. <laughs> that's, that's completely on track. Well, I only have one thing to say to that, Blaine. I'm a lumberjack, and I'm okay. <laughs> That's right. Great song. Great song. Moving on. So, But I do believe uh, we're trying for the audience to outline this dark uh, specter mm-hmm. that has infected the entire defense establishment, essentially yeah. from the philosophy at the individual le- level where you permit behavior and um, you rate the immutable qualities of an individual higher than actual merit or performance. And I think it's dangerous. I think, you know, I'll be blunt. I think uh, Lloyd Austin's a diversity hire. I think uh, he's a product of a system which uh, uh, rewarded essentially a lack of, of, of high performance because of, you know, need for certain individuals with skin color to be put in certain positions. And, and, and I'm speaking because I know the man. It's not like right. I haven't served with him. This is not speculation. This no, is I not agree. me. And so, and I, I talk about it in dark heart a little bit. So let's move on to the next thing I wanted to touch base on this is, is that those diversity hires have seemed to infect it, our entire system. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to ask you a question. I may get you in trouble here because I'm trying to. Just saying. That's fine. Um, how many? How often is it proper to go pick up Girl Scout cookies in the middle of the night? Is it okay if you know, say, a, a, if you if say Fanny Willis, Fanny Willis, if she was dealing Girl Scout cookies, do you think it would be good to visit her 35 times between the hours of 11 o'clock and 4 a.m.? Is that all normal? Do you think? You know, you might want to watch your electronic footprint on something. <laughs> like that. Yeah. <laughs> Too. It's like, yeah, we use that to put people in prison. So, yeah. So, it's, um, it's stunning how they really don't care what it looks like. And honestly, Tony, I chalk it all up to this massive collective arrogance. Yeah. They've got a two tier justice system that they believe will continue to work for them and in their direction. 
But here's the thing. You've got yeah. this thing I call ROTC outside of the beltway, rest mm-hmm. of the country. And the rest of the country can see these things very clearly for what they are. And what we don't want in the country is financial collapse, World War III, a bunch of terrorists on our soil that are going to take us out, um, and this globalism that is going to alleviate of, us of all our rights. We do want to own stuff, and we'll decide whether or not we're happy. And yeah. and these these episodes where uh, Lloyd Austin thinks it's okay to be AWOL, and he's fine, but I would have to prosecute an airman down to – um, out of the Air Force below the zone for that type of stuff. Um, they don't care. They really don't care what it looks like, which makes me wonder, do they fear a ballot box? Uh, well, that's get a- back to what they call the big lie or the elections. Well, you and I both know there was election fraud, and I'll touch that in a second, because yeah. this, this is why I wanted to go to the Fannie Bonnie Willis thing, which overlaps. It's kind of a conne- it's It's part of the connective tissue, the progressive left's effort mm-hmm. to basically do uh, I don't know if if because the rest of the country is watching, but you know I mentioned the Lloyd Austin thing. You and I both know if if we had anybody working for us, you'd give them at least bad paper. You'd give them at least an Article sure. Fifteen, at yeah. least minimum, minimum uh, for dereliction. Uh, if if it's a pattern, if it's drug related, you put them out. I mean, come on, you you and I've done this. I mean, it's it's, it's, it's you can do it in your it's, sleep. It's not hard. Yeah, so yeah. So and then at the same time, then you've had this debacle of, of Afghanistan, which is linked at the beginning of the failures, the serial failures of the Pentagon. That's why I want to go to Willis, because anyone else watching this, uh, this, this, I don't even know how to describe it, because I, I got to tell you, it's a sick pleasure at night when I do prep. It's like, I got to watch a fan, a funny Willis video. This is great. <laughs> I watch no, I'm sitting there. Yeah, you and I do, watch a lot of the same folks because they're very accurate. And it's like I'm sitting there, it's like, oh, I got to watch a funny Willis Phillips. This is this is great. And I mean, who doesn't love this idea that you get this uh, this uh, uh, John Shaft looking guy who basically is uh, cuckold cuckold? Is that the word? Cuck, can yeah. I use that word on this? For I guess I can use that word. Yeah, can, yeah, yeah that's clean. <laughs> yeah. So uh, so we're cracking the Fanny Willis thing. Oh, did I say that? I couldn't. I shouldn't say that. I can't. I can't that, say crack. Too much. Now you've gone over. Too much. I've gone over the board. <laughs> I've crossed the line. You're in a but new my place. point. My point being, any other sane uh, judiciary would have said, "Dude, yeah, we're right. done here." I mean, days ago, and yet somehow, because of reasons. We're still listening to this, and the judge yeah. hasn't, hasn't even ruled on it. How you is the this judge possible? Who, the judge who gave her campaign donations? Yeah. Who has yeah. history with her? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> there's there's no gambling in the casino. <laughs> it's just, it's 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 ridiculous, but it is all related. And I think the words left progressive are very kind. I think it's all Marxism. And Marxists don't believe in your civil rights. They believe in theirs. They don't believe in your stuff. They believe in your stuff going to them. Um, and well, that's where I'm going with this next. Oh, yeah. They're, and they're outraged that there's a guy named Orange Man out there who um, is standing in between us and them. Uh, yeah. and, and they want to go vanquish him. And I don't know if you caught it yesterday, but another another thing dropped from Hulk, Governor Hochul decided if you truckers aren't going to deliver to New York, I might get interested in your bank accounts in your homes. Yeah. Now, how chilling is that? Well, the Canadians already tried that, and they're they still, did. you know, suffering through that. And I, again, that's something that, to me, is extraordinary in that it, I think shows their true colors. And let's go to that point because you mentioned elections. So, I look at the community where I live, and I, I pulse it. I try to go out and I, I interact. And it's interesting that so many of the people who I think were very reliable Democrats, that is to say certain minorities, certain groups, uh, and, and I'll just use the Fonnie, Fonnie Willis issue as a thing, are, certain people are appalled that people in their party are actually conducting themselves in such a manner to disrespect uh, the, the black minority. I mean, I've talked to people who are appalled, right. uh, Blaine, that these people are supposed to be representative of the best of who we are. Yeah. I mean, how, well, I mean, it's just how does I don't friends. understand? Yeah, They've got new friends. It's called the illegals, and yeah. and and San Francisco and New York are leading the way with wanting to let them vote. So yeah. if they're going to vote and they're going to do this, they've got new friends. Yeah. Why do they need you? Yeah. Exactly. And I think they're waking up to that fact. Is like I think they've moved past this right. and they're on to another bright shiny object. But that's the point. So this 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 upcoming election, and I did want to get to this later, but let's get to it now because I think it's mm-hmm. it's adequate for the for the discussion. There there were there were clear departures 
from normal process mm-hmm. regarding voting no in 2020. Yep. Uh, I personally, as you know, investigated uh, the pallet of ballots guy, mm-hmm. uh, you know, uh, Jesse Morgan. I don't want to get into that, but uh, people can Google it. It's pretty easy to find out that Bill Barr personally, and I still don't understand what authority Bill used to get me fired, but he did because yeah. I refused to comply with his direction to turn over a whistleblower to the FBI right. instead of accepting the fact that maybe I had a valid point to get the guy representation and protection. Right. No, let's just fire Schaefer because, you know, we'll just, right. and we'll have the knucklehead above him turn him over, which is what happened. It, it, you know, you don't have a turn. Let me ask you this. How many t- do you think that attorney generals just call people out of the blue if they have nothing to worry about? Oh, you and I live in parallel worlds, brother. In 2014, when the little green men took Ukraine, um, and I was the dissenting voice for presidential advice, I dissented yeah. from the other generals. Um, I was like, well, that's that. I gave my opinion. And then not 20 minutes later, seven layers up the management pole, I get a call from the White House. And I and I get my face ripped off for even thinking differently. Yeah. And that's the dangerous thing, is that yeah. I think we all recognize that, that um, you and I have spent collectively a lot of time in uniform right uh, i think we've uh, run in a lot of the same circles which is, is fun to talk about at times but my problem is this if you or i say something to someone it's not because we're looking for self uh, uh, benefit right or promotion um i and you know i i admire the fact that you made it the brigadier general and 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 were able to to put the star on but i also recognize that once you become that level of senior, you're a danger to the infrastructure if you decide to go against it. So my, my kudos to you. And I've always, I've said this both privately and publicly. I, I admire your courage I because uh, I know a lot of generals, you and I both know a lot of generals. We talk to them often. Yep. Some are willing to come out and talk to us, some aren't. But uh, it, it just seems to me that we have a time that we have to pick sides. Sides And the side that I've chosen to pick, I think you have too, is objective truth versus uh, whatever opinions may be represented as aspirations of politicians. Yeah. And how do we get more people to wake up to the fact that we need to step away from aspirations and focus on, on real facts? That's the message. The message is that, which is if, if what, what has to happen in our country crisis-wise right now, yeah. how much closer does this republic have to get to the edge of the cliff for someone who has power and has uniform and stars and uh, ability, how closer to the abyss before they'll actually stand up and say, you know what, I'm an American first, I have an oath to the Constitution first, and and that supplants any ambition I have in my personal life, and it has to come first. If, yeah. if this is not that time now, then tell me what is. Well, that point of brisance may well be the southwest border. So let's let's go there because well, that's not we can't go there, but let's let's <laughs> pretend. Yes. Shut your eyes, audience. It's coming. To us. <laughs> picture, yeah, picture, right. picture the picture, uh, uh, picture being on the border. Watch people with all their positions walking across. I can picture it. I'm sure you can too. Mm-hmm. But that's where I want to take us right now. Uh, uh, Blaine is to the Southwest border because one of the things that was said yesterday during this thing, I, I think you and I've had some time now, we've probably watched Chuck Schumer came out and made this comment about, it's just not the right time to fix the border. That's right. Ukraine first. What? Yeah, exactly. It's like, now are, juxtapose, are you kidding that, me? Ju- juxtapose that over the, the story about the Chinese redoing Glock switches so that they can turn handguns into automatic weapons know. and flood the country. Go ahead and right. juxtapose the two. And by the way, um, the most conservative estimate on PLA inside our country operating right now is 50,000. I know that that's, a, that's just a crap number. It's it's probably three times that number. But but think about the implications and why, why would they have those capabilities happening in our country right now? Why are they arming gangs and why is that okay? Well, I know. And then and then one of the things I find uh, within the same comments, you know, uh, Joe Biden needs to have congressional action to get authorities like what? He's got the laws on his books right now. He doesn't he need to literally a once he dismantled over like 100 executive orders. Right. And and one of my dear friends and I, you, you, you're you going to talk to him here, uh, I think, soon is uh, Sergio de la Pena. Uh, oh, yeah. Sergio being the uh, former Assistant Secretary of Defense for Western Hemisphere, he was involved in this. They yeah. they basically fixed a, about 80% of this. They didn't fix everything. Yeah. So, but Biden himself personally dismantled all of that coming into office. So it's kind of right. like, really? Yeah. Uh, they, they broke it. And now uh, what? And this goes back to the objective reality versus aspirations. Anybody who takes 10 minutes 
and studies what we're talking about will find that uh, you, they have created this problem for purposes of, of uh, trying to fix it, and that the legislation they use will simply create a hardened path for illegal aliens to come in. It's not about stopping. It's about hardening it, right? right. That's right. That's exactly right. But, you know, a lot of people scoff at President Trump and they say, no, we can't do a mass deportation. Look, we have no choice. If, right. if we if we want to survive, we have no choice because what's about to happen to our cities, uh, we're going to see that in the cities first and then we're going to see it in the rest of the country. Um, but I think Americans are in for a very rude awakening in the next few months. They are. So we're going to take a break. This is uh, The Hard Truth. Tony Schaefer, about halfway through. Uh, we'll be right back. Continuing this this uh, this uh, lively conversation with uh, Brigadier General Retired Blaine Holt of Restore Liberty, and we'll be uh, talking more about uh, the future. Uh, well, you know, uh, there's some things coming up. I think that the American people need to be aware of. We're going to try to provide a little bit of who's uh, saying, if you will, about what's coming. So we'll be right back. World-class care from doctors you can trust, all from the comfort of your home. That is One Wellness. Dr. Peter McCullough and his team at The Wellness Company launched the One Wellness membership to provide free monthly supplements and unlimited telemedicine access with doctors that share your values. Be a part of a revolutionary new healthcare system that puts your health and well-being above the interests of Big Pharma's bottom line. It's the way healthcare should be. Go to OutLoudCare.com today and use code OUTLOUD for 25% off your first month of One Wellness. Cholesterol, blood pressure, blood sugar, inflammation, and weight. These are all real-world problems that 87% of Americans are struggling with. Fight back with Heal Right. Heal Right is a bar you eat, but it's food as medicine that addresses the nutritional root cause of health issues in just eight weeks. Take action today. Visit HealRight.com slash OutLoud or AmericaOutloud.shop and use the code OUTLOUD for 20% off. The buildup of spike proteins is dangerous to your health. Global Healing's foreign protein cleanse detoxes your body, removing the spike proteins, allowing your body to repair from within. Formulated by Dr. Edward Group and by Dr. Brian Artis, foreign protein cleanse targets and detoxes spike proteins in the body. Go to americaoutloud.shop and get 15% off using the code OUTLOUD. Global healing, giving you the power to take control of your health naturally. You've all heard Dr. McCullough and others share over and over the value of keeping your sinuses cleansed. It's a smart move all year, but even more so when we're cooped up inside. It's not really open for debate any longer. Those that live smart and live well pay attention to nasal and oral hygiene. Cofix RX has just the tools for the job with our nasal and throat cleanse. Click the Cofix RX banner on AmericaOutloud.shop to get 20% off your entire order. That's right, AmericaOutloud.shop. Use coupon code OUTLOUD. That's coupon code OUTLOUD for 20% off your entire order. Use Cofix RX because it works. Cardiovascular disease is the leading cause of death and disability. Lifestyle changes are critical, but you can also support your heart with concentrated nutrients. Healthy Cell created heart and vascular health to support cholesterol and blood pressure with CoQ10, vitamin K2, resveratrol, and soluble fiber. And Healthy Cell's not a pill. It's a patent-pending gel you swallow. Get heart healthy. Go to HealthyCell.com and use code OUTLOUD for 25% off your first order. HealthyCell.com Code out loud for 25% off. When God, through his grace and mercy, gave us free will, the will of the people was to live freely. To that end, we fight for the liberty of all at a time when global tyranny threatens us as never before in mankind's history. This vision is manifest at AmericaOutloud.news, a site for all who cherish free will and freedom. Now is our time, my fellow Americans. America Out Loud Talk Radio. Liberty and justice for all. It's Hard Truths with Tony Schaefer, part two. Still powered by Six Hour, never settle. I had a choice of what I carried in combat. I always carried the best. I highly recommend you carry the best, just like Brigadier General Blaine Holt and I carry Sig Sauer. 
he carries his 365, so do I. I carry some other things as well. So anyway, we never settle. Uh, we're on the America Out Loud talk radio network, also available in the America Out Loud podcast network. Check us out, Project Sentinel, projectsentinel.com, .net, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Rumble. And of course, as always, a special shout out to Cherie Curry. Cherie uh, does our bumper and theme music. God bless you, Cherie. Cherie's out uh, a little bit fed up with California. Just go check out her Facebook if you want to know what I mean. Uh, so, you know, you can only go woke for so long before you just like, I'm out of here. So out Cherie is getting fed up. That's right. So we are now joined by the erudite uh, Elizabeth Breckenkamp for part two of the show and the, the, oh, yeah. the sagacious uh, Chris Cordani. And the Donish. The toxic, yep, we're bringing the toxic masculinity here. That's right. And then, of course, the ever Donish, the ever Donish uh, Brigadier General Blaine Holt. And Donish is actually a word. I didn't know that. Until that is a word. Yeah. It is Even a word. Even in Georgia, we use that word. <laughs> it's the word for the day. Yeah. At the Look at words. Up. You know, we're trying to improve the, the vocabulary of everybody who tunes mm -hmm. in. So uh, mm -hmm. we're going to continue with General Holt. Uh, Blaine, as we ended the. Um, first part of the show, we were talking about the Southwest border and let's begin with that so we can roll into some other things. But I do believe that at this point, every community in the nation, either because of uh, illegals murdering people like in Georgia, like in Florida, uh, or the, per the pervasive and sustained penetration of, uh, of, of fentanyl into every community, every community in the United States and fentanyl, the origins are China. Uh, I, I think most roads lead back to China at this point. What do you think? No, I agree. And I think if you took a military planner's analysis to this, you can start to see the um, the plan against the United States uh, through our southern border pretty clearly now in their lines of operation. You've got um, the, the Chinese PLA is definitely here now. You've got fentanyl and their alliance with the cartels. So they have distribution networks that don't just lend themselves to drugs, but they lend themselves yeah. to weapons as well as we were discussing. But but then when you take a look at the international organizations laid over the top of that, which would be the United Nations funded by the non-governmental organizations funded by us, the taxpayers, what they're doing is they've created these bank card systems where they can flood the nation with these illegals, most of them fighting age men, by the way. And, mm -hmm. um, and so now you can see the ability for your enemy to start the triggering. So the triggering to me looks this way. Um, I cut your money off. The UN cuts the funds off. And now you've got all these people in these hotels pent up in these cities with nothing. Then they're going to go get something. That's your stuff. That creates the chaos. The chaos is a nice camouflage for the terror groups that came in across that border. And then they get after those operations. Then you've got political stability units in the PLA, whether they're arming gangs around us or whether they're going after things like water, your infrastructure, cyber, your power grid, that is a four-pronged access that we face now coming up through the border. So what I would say is anybody who's sworn oath to this constitution and their weakest excuse down on that border is, well, I have a mortgage and a kid, so I just have to do what they say, but I'll break the law. Um, well, this will come out one day because this is what you're enabling. Well, two things before I let Elizabeth jump in, because I, I need to, uh, one of the things that most impressed me about you, sir, with all due respect, was when we were on our first interview together on Newsmax, and you brought, we somehow got on the topic of the the Chinese trying to undermine Western currency as a main mm -hmm. objective. And you were like spot on. It's like, holy cow, this general knows what he's talking about. I don't know if you remember that interview, but it was kind of like, we started, a riff back and, <laughs> we started a riff back and forth. It's like, oh my God, you know, this is real stuff. Mm -hmm. And I was very impressed by the fact that uh, you understand it. Many others don't, that, that, that the very targeting of our currency, of the petrodollar, is a national security threat. Right. How, do, how do people not recognize that if, if the value of our currency drops out, we drop out as a superpower? Is, is how this how is it okay for military leaders not to understand the economics of the world that we live in right now yeah. and how their lines of operations? Um, because then you'll get military uh, leaders who will sit there and say, oh, well, um, the border's not my problem. Oh, um, yeah. economic, that would be the Treasury Department. Go see somebody else. Yeah. And it's like, no, 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 no. You have the whole basket in your hands. If it's right. a national security issue, you need to be a student of it. And, and and I think I, I'm very happy that you highlighted that. Now, the nice well, thing for you. all of us is China's going down the commode. <laughs> it just makes them yeah. really dangerous right now. 
Well, that's the thing too, and I, 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 we, we could probably talk about it. But one other thing, Elizabeth, sorry, it's my show. I get to, I get that's to. Okay. Here. <laughs> it's your so, show. It is my show, so I can. Hey, you know, I'm using, yeah, I'm yeah. using, I'm <laughs> using my host prerogative. So, uh, speaking of, of the southwest border, you know, one of my assignments at, at, back in the '90s was as the senior clandestine advisor to the J two, the the N two, Navy of uh, of Joint Interagency Task Force East, JADF East, which is now JADF South and Key West. And by the way, Key West is a cool place to be assigned. Don't let anybody kid you. It's fun. Uh, anyway, as I was there <laughs> advising, one of the things we recognized in the mid-90s after we had defeated, one of the untold stories of DOD is that we were instrumental in helping uh, DEA, U.S. Customs Service, uh, uh, basically uh, uh, take out the Medellin and Cali cartels. There's a great book out by my friend Mark Bowden called Killing Pablo. You know, we, we can't actually do things uh, as a military when we set our mind to it. So the, the idea was, hey, we, let's go get rid of the cartels. And it's like, OK, we'll do that. And we did it. Uh, the problem was we didn't understand the consequences of, of actually taking out the two lead organizations. You basically shattered it. So there's mil- a million more. It's kind of right. know, basically the, the, the multi-headed hydra. If you yeah. cut three heads off, six come back. So. Yeah. We didn't get that. And that's why I don't think they want to talk about it. But my point to you, General, is that we recognized during the process of doing these operations, Mexico was going to become destabilized. And oh, by the way, uh, it's going to become a safe haven for not only drug cartels, but any number of illegal activities. And yet somehow this assessment fell on deaf ears and nobody wanted to hear about the fact that Mexico was going in that direction. Uh, And my question to you is, uh, how is it that we have so many senior leaders uh, in DOD, in the political process, that's not willing to listen and look at facts as they are regarding the trends? Because now here we are, Mexico's destabilized, and we're looking at, at real, at real that they're they're an enemy at our border right now. Sure. So if you look at that, the there's no. I'll just be very blunt. There's no money. There is no money in a war or in military operations that stabilize Mexico and stabilize us with Mexico. So yeah. if you're going to go after the cartels, you don't need a $3 billion bomber. You don't, no, you need, don't. You don't you need don't. a molecular vaporizer or some future weapon system. But if yeah. you're going to fight overseas wars with nuclear powers, oh, you need all those things. So that's yeah. where the money is. So then you get uh, this class of general officers and military leaders in suits who will look at lovingly at the military industrial complex and they'll just simply go, you know, one day, if I just shut my mouth, uh, I can revolve into a board assignment with Northrop Grumman or some other company at 400,000 a year for showing up for three meetings. Who doesn't want that? But the problem is, is now you're conflicted on best military advice to the nation. If these neocons who just lust for war, and they really lust for dollars, not the war, but if they lust for war, um, then look no further than our backyard in America, because um, there's plenty of it there. We probably should be at war right now with the cartels as transnational actors. We probably should be chopping off the Chinese from climbing up into our inner south. And yet there's no money in any of that. The the big money is sitting in Europe, and it's sitting down in the Middle East right now. Now, Tony Zinni, General Zinni, told me that he was disgusted when he was he was He's looking at be blood. He, he was a, the CEO of the BAE, yep. and he said that that he got fed up with the fact that his job was not to actually do what's necessary to help uh, uh, U.S. and NATO allies protect their nations. His job was to grow their their income by seven percent per year as a corporation. Yep. Yep. Anyway, sorry, I just wanted to. Go off. Sorry, Elizabeth. Over to you. No, that's okay. Um, so, I mean, there's like so many points um, that he had brought up, but you know, going back to um, how the uh, recently the army had said, you know, they had announced that they're cutting about twenty five percent because they can't recruit. You know, because they're they're more and more woke and they're more concerned with paying for people's sex change surgeries and all this kind of stuff, but. So when I was in, you know, I joined in 1992 and I retired Mm -hmm. just three years ago. What I remember, and I wanted to look it up again to see if they still have it, at least for the Army. I don't know about the other branches, but for the Army, and Tony, I know you would remember this. Remember, we would have this training. It was always ongoing. And they took the acronym leadership, L-D-R-S-H-I-P. And remember, each letter stood for something. I know you would still remember L is for loyalty. Duty, respect, selfless service. They had to give you little cards with it. 
Like yes, little green and cards with white print. Carried the you cards around. Yeah. We even had the load, and it and it was really instilled in us that each one of those values actually meant something. And remember what the P stands for: personal courage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which I thought was kind of funny. It's like seems like you'd have C for but anyway. But I I thought let me see what the army dot com says, and they still have it there. But I, this is interesting. I want to read this: personal courage. Personal courage, physical and moral, has been associated with our army. With physical courage, it's a matter of enduring physical duress and at times risking your own personal safety. Yeah. Facing moral fear or adversity may be a long, slow process of continuing forward on the right path, especially if taking those actions is not popular with others. You can build your personal courage by daily standing up for and acting upon the things that you know are honorable. And that I think is why it's so hard to recruit pretty much anybody today in the, at least in the, all the, our legal citizens, because a lot of people don't have that value instilled in them, or they don't see how it's relevant to them. Or, you know, like I know we'd said this before in previous shows, a lot of people look at their country and they say, well, I wouldn't want to go defend my country because, you know, so many of these younger kids aren't even told to love their country. So I thought that was interesting. That's that's what it says on army.mil slash values. Mm -hmm. and, and it's I just thought that was interesting. Acting upon the things, you know, are honorable. And I don't, what do you think about that? General Holt. Civics and history were ripped mm -hmm. out of our schools for decades. Mm -hmm. And those are the foundational building blocks that allow somebody to think in terms of something that's bigger than themselves, of doing the right thing when no one's looking. Ethics certainly left the train station decades ago. And so when you erode those things, and, and it's really these are Marxist precepts to erode yeah. those things so that your allegiance is really to the state, whatever you're told. And, and it's very Machiavellian. The way to right the ship if is not to decrease force structure in the army by 24,000. Um, my uh, tough medicine that I would bring in is to create more stakeholders and doing that by having a blind draft, meaning you're in, oh, yeah. uh, let's have a two year public service campaign. You're in, you're drafted. I don't care if you're the son of, or the daughter of a Congressman, or you went to Yale or any of that stuff. Uh, we're not going to play the Vietnam game. You're actually just in now. Mm -hmm. When it's it's just like in COVID, when we brought all our kids home from school and we got to look into their classrooms on a Zoom screen, we went, "Oh my God, what are they teaching my child?" It's yeah. the same type of honesty. People finally realized what was happening that, when they right. were forced to stay home. Which and if, if what, America has skin in the, the game, pandemic. and they understand that their kids enjoy the ultimate liability for going to some stupid war that some neocon wants, Americans mm -hmm. will wake up and go. This could get my kid killed. And it's like, welcome, breathe oxygen. Wouldn't you rather your kid be steeped in constitutional values at this point in time and mm -hmm. us have a more discerning conversation about when to go to war, when not to go to war, what deterrence is mm -hmm. than the current industrial complex that we have in a all volunteer complex where nobody can hear you scream. When you were talking about courage, the only thing I can think of is the exact opposite of courage. And, and that would be uh, uh, a man who's stepping down from the Senate Republican leadership uh, uh, in November. That would be one Mitch McConnell. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yes. So mm -hmm. uh, there, there's somebody who I look, I, I know there's a good chance he's compromised and we can get into all of that and we can talk about that. That's going to be a whole other show. But the fact is, a quick question for all of you is we need somebody to step in who has some of the courage. And mm -hmm. is well, there a what are the chances that's going to happen? This is a pre Tony's take, Tony's take, I guess. Uh, I think that's, that's a good take, question. If you will. Right. Well, Personal Blaine, what do you think? I mean, I, I think got, Speaker Johnson so far has done a pretty good job, but I'm not sure if he's the answer. Uh, Mensa, Mensa, but look, he's not, he's not a communist. That's a good thing. Yeah. And, and, uh, on, 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 on the Senate side, we have, look, we've got young bucks who could get up there and probably do a great job. The problem is the, the industry that is the beltway, the industry that is the deep state, uh, will now quickly want to fill that gap and and pre-select who that person that's going to be like Mitch is. And there will likely be somebody who's compromised. There will likely be somebody who will do the go-along, get-along thing. as long And, and even, 
even Schumer is going to weigh in with the Republican Party on who that is, because the Republican Party is really two parties right now. There's the uniparty side that respects all things Washington, D.C., and says audacious things like Ukraine is more important than the United States southern border. Um, and then there's constitutional Americans who represent the rest of the country. Um, they're, they're, they have a smaller voice. Uh, hopefully the next presidential election changes some of that if we actually get to have an election. But um, I think McConnell coming out is very telling because I think we're going to learn some things about Ukraine and some of these other things in the coming days that will make it a very uncomfortable position for him to be in. Speaking of that, real quick on the issue of Schumer, Blaine, would you support the idea of tactically deploying Amy Schumer and tactical gear to Ukraine? Do you think that's a good idea? Oh, totally a great idea. Skin in the game, think, get her there. Like, I run her right out there. I, I think she, uh, I think she'd look good in battle dress or whatever we could find to fit her. So. Oh. It's possible. I, I'm going to say it's probably not going to end up that way. But, but look, you know, President Zelensky's made a complete brand out of an olive drab sweatshirt, and uh, but but he, <laughs> he just, I think he's in a lot of trouble <laughs> as we get going. Uh, you know, you know, look, if you look at the New York Times article just two days ago, it really said the quiet part out loud. All of the it information did. is out there for you. The CIA has admitted to all their shenanigans going back to 2014. So why? Why would we continue down this track without a careful analysis as to who stoked the the war in Ukraine? Um, I think it's time for the truths to come out because I think the truths are what mm -hmm. help us avoid a nuclear war. Um, I'll tell you what, and, and all of these leaders, they've got some sort of um, problem in air quotes with Ukraine and its casino-like corruption features. And again, we, would we really go to war? Uh, when we have a president's son and a president who um, have conflicts of interest sitting there inside of Ukraine, well, yeah. it happens on both sides. I think that that New York Times article should be the catalyst to a very careful examination about uh, what are we doing and who here needs to be held accountable uh, for this 10-year uh, saga called uh, uh, Ukraine. And by the way, oh. is for the audience mm -hmm. to understand, at this point, this article's been out. Nobody's disputed it, and yet it's got virtually no play anywhere, which is like mm -hmm. frightening. Mm -hmm. And to that okay. point, um, you know, I've said uh, very a number of times publicly, mm -hmm. this war is all about resources and influence within the EU. Uh, the EU is using this for to, to their advantage. The United States really thought they could move Ukraine out of the sphere of the Soviet Union or Russia, whatever you want to call it. And the and and what really promulgated this, I believe, is the resources that there were right. massive resources of gas and oil found 2012, 2013, which mm -hmm. is like, oh, oh, this is a great opportunity for U the EU to use Ukraine, not Russia, as an energy partner. And, and, and oh, by the way, we can destabilize Russia. Right. Yeah, right. right. Well, it is about that time again, gentlemen. Oh, oh, oh. Is it really? That's right. Oh, yeah, it right. is time for Tony's takes. Oh my! And I have to tell you, we can always string this in because, as Mitch McConnell would say. Oh, we need Ukraine because uh, that's about uh, all the money we send goes to Americans, American contractors, defense people. <laughs> that's, that's, that's right. I, I have to stick these Mitch McConnell impersonations in before November, I guess, right? That's but very good. To, but let's get to Tony's takes, and that's right. powered by Sig Sauer, Never Settle. Never I, I, don't think, I don't think the Democrats are settling. There are a couple of, uh, there, there are a couple of new candidates in the Democratic uh, uh, primary landscape now. Okay. One's a recycled one, and one's somebody who just came out of nowhere. Mm. There's a guy named Yunk, I believe is Yunk Ahmedid, right? Hmm. Yunk Ahmedid? Oh, no, uncommitted. Okay, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> well played, sir. Oh my well played. God. He seems to have done fairly well in the Democrat primary, beating out Biden in a, in a large place like Dearborn, with about 100,000 of its voters piling on for this interesting opponent. Perhaps uncommitted has a good shot at winning this Democratic primary. What's your take? So my take is this: I, I think uh, this is indi indicative of that. Uh, if 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 things don't go better for the Democrats, you're going to see flying monkeys used as a weapon of mass destruction during the general election. Uh, mm -hmm. I think Nancy Pelosi is now uh, uh, arming up, <laughs> beating up, and preparing for mass deployment of flying monkeys. I, I think that's what's about yeah. to happen. Yeah. Dogs and cats living together type stuff here. I, yeah. look, they, none, none of them want to You're face. Worrying. None yeah. of them want to face uh, accountability, and so I think the lawfare is going to go up. 
Yeah. I think the um, get get Trump at any possible way, and and it's not just that he's got detractors uh, in the Democrat Marxist camp. He's got detractors in the Uniparty side from the Republican Party, and so uh, it's going to be it's going to be an amazing year. I'll tell you what, though, the the it's it's baked into the cake. Americans are going to feel some pain in the next few months in a variety mm-hmm. of ways that we've been talking about here, yep. and that's going to change the cocktail. But Blaine, let me ask you a question related to this. Uh, that number of, I think it was 16%, that that would end the Democrats' ability to control Michigan if you have that many defections from, uh, from Biden. If, they don't if they'll them. have elections where you don't come in at three in the morning and tape paper all over the windows, yes, it could actually make a difference. And it's well, been, it's been virtually no reporting on this by the left because I think they're actually like, they don't want to talk about it. Oh, they're freaking let's, out. <laughs> let's add another couple points to that because- all right. By the way, how bad is Dean Phillips doing? He just got a whole boatload of money, and he can't, he finished behind Marianne Williamson, who, by the way, is now back in the race. <laughs> I like that. Unsuspended her campaign. This might be fun. And maybe she saw how good this uh, Junk Committed is doing, and maybe she can beat <laughs> him next election. We'll see. The, the other thing is, there are a lot of Democrats who jumped ship and voted for Nikki Haley just to try to kneecap Donald Trump a little bit, and we saw how that went. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. What I'm going to ask both of you, and again, I want yeah. your takes, or all of you, all three, I want sure. your takes on this. Sure. Here's sure. my assessment. But all, this is a message from the pro-terrorist wing of the Democrat Party. It, it might be a small wing, but it's a, let's just put it this way, it's a large enough wing to control which way the Democrat Party is going. Am I far off hmm. on this, or am I not? I think, not. I, I think you're right on the money. I, I think this sense. is... This is what has pulled them into this Marxism space, uh, but going along down the lines of the the origins of that terrorism, go go to Palestinian terrorism where mm-hmm. a lot of these folks hail from, and it's all Marxist precepts. That yeah. that's that's what all of this is, um, and they're beholden to it. They're shackled to it, but they're shackled to it in a variety of ways. Chris, it's not just uh, that's where our dollars for elections are coming from. That would actually be innocent. Um, these folks are compromised. They're extorted. They're blackmailed. There is a mess, a hot mess over there. And I, what I would love to see is true, honest, liberal Democrats miss them, uh, come to the foray and say, we didn't sign up for this. Uh, look, I get it. I disagree with Republicans, but this, that's not what we are. And and they should they should really step up. Well, never no, fear, right. because. Never fear, because Biden has told Seth Meyers that he has his 2020 campaign strategy ready to go. He does. <laughs> oh, good. Well, speaking of a campaign, I think we didn't actually uh, address Nikki Haley adequately. You know, uh, go, go, uh, um, Gordon Gecko, or, uh, a.k.a. Uh, Gavin Newsom, yeah. uh, actually uh, said the quiet part out loud that she is the best proxy for, um, for the Democrats, one of the best. Mm-hmm. And uh, Blaine, I'm going to do my own uh, kind of uh, out of the uh, going left here, so to speak. Do you think there's any chance that Justin Trudeau and uh, and uh, Governor Newsom may hook up at some point and and, and like marry? Because those guys are like uh, they must be, you know, it's like narcissist. You know, there, they, they would there's love a lot each of other. frustration in between the two of them. I, have I think to. narcissists are are naturally attracted to each other. Yeah, they can do each other's hair. Uh, That's yeah. true. And eyebrows. They could like it. Like Oof. it, uh, you know, do their eyebrows together. It's great Fuck hair. It is. No, Nikki there's a lot Haley, of frustration. <laughs> yeah, I, th- I think Nikki Haley refuses to to give up because she just. She, I think she's got to be self aware enough to realize that she won't win, but she's gonna divide enough people to prevent Orange Man from winning. You know what I mean? It's kind of like she's well, that. She she yeah. Yeah. No, she's, I mean, she's down bringing in Democrats. Area. <laughs> Basically, her strength is coming from Democrats who wouldn't vote right. for him anyway. Right. I do have I, two. Chris, I, I have two minutes with the military men. Chris, hold on, oh. I, I can't believe you use Democrats and strength in the same sentence. I can't believe I you know. said. Well, I, well, they they can lift up all that soy, so that's about it. That's they a lot can of lift soy. their soy lattes. <laughs> that's and that's like a that. lot of soy. <laughs> I have the military men for two minutes and the military lady, all three all of right. you. So here it is, soy quick. Strength. Tony's, Blaine's, and Elizabeth's take right now. Best ever military based comedy show. Oh, that's easy. I'll let everybody right. else go first. I have to say mash. Okay. You're I think high. that was so funny. Blaine, you want to go next? Or do you want me to do yeah, it? Yeah. Um, Please don't I've say McHale's Navy. 
I am going with McHale's Navy. There's no way you can get oh, me out of McHale's Navy. I, I have to go with the Phil Silvers show. See, I'm going that with Hogan's I Heroes. I love Hogan's Heroes. That's a good one. Oh, I love Hogan. Hogan. Yeah. I was just, I didn't know if F Troop would count because if F Troop counted, that was going to be me. But that uh, counts. No, F Troop counts. counts military. Yeah. Calorie counts as military. Can yeah. Yeah. There we go. I thought but, we were going to talk about the best rat. A bit, the, oh, I gave away my answer. The One of the, the best uh, 60s uh, combat show, which was the Rat Patrol. Oh, I loved that. I loved Sergeant Troy. Never missed it. Uh, I'm surprised nobody said at ease. <laughs> a very short lived one with uh, yeah. Mike, with David Norton and Jimmy Walker. Yep. I missed that combat? one. That was so short lived. I didn't even get that one. <laughs> okay. didn't no. last well, that's it. I guess we're going to wrap up now, right, Chris? Is it? Is it that I think time? we are. Yeah, wow. I believe so. It's, it's been a lightning fast. hour, and uh, wow. obviously, I, I I always appreciate the, the and I I'm saying this because I I really do appreciate the friendship and mentorship of the general. Uh, people like me who have been off the reservation need to be pulled back on once in a while. So, general, I appreciate your, your oh, being appreciate able to do you. that. Thank you very much. I appreciate you all, and what a what a fun what a fun sandbox to play in for the afternoon. Thank you. So much. Yeah. Well, no, and I think at the time we're taping this, there's a lot of chaos uh, on the horizon. We see the storm clouds, and uh, you, you know, obviously, uh, I encourage people to watch Blaine on all the social media and programs he's on. He's he's been able to be way ahead of the curve, like many of us are, and uh, as as Trent uh, Trent Lott once told me. Being right ahead of time in Washington is never a good thing. Right, Blaine? Oh, yeah. It'll get you hurt. Quick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but we're, we love pain, so we're going to continue to do it. Bring it. <laughs> check, check back here next week. We'll be back with another episode of The Hard Truth. We'll see you then.